Okay, I think it's time to get started. Okay, everyone, uh, good evening again. Thank you for joining us in this warm early spring evening. So I'm Ming, I will be the host tonight. And today's event is jointly organized by AppSuite Academy and Azure Education. For those of you who probably know me and know AppSuite Academy, we offer learning programs for all grade levels from grades five to grade 11, 12. We help students achieving their academic study goals. And also this week, we're introducing a zoo education. A zoo education um, is actually funded by Helen. That's Helen over there, just, just wave to everyone. So under her leadership, a zoo uh, education has a group of professionals helping um, students um, achieving their uh, both career and education goals. So they have a deep understanding of the school system as well as qualifications in career, academic planning, and they provide academic planning and coaching. So that's what we do. And we'll put the link to uh, Helen's website after the mid, uh, uh, at the end of our uh, webinar. Okay, that's a very brief introduction about two organizations who bring this to all of our audience to, today. Then let's get to our, the focal point is our guest, Sabine, Sabina. Okay, Sabina is a, uh, it's a, four, a fourth year student at Rotman uh, University of Toronto. He has been studying there for, for four years, okay? And he's actually majored in uh, economics, okay? She received many offers like four years ago from many schools, including Rothman, Western, and McMaster. And eventually she has chosen Rothman. Or maybe there's a reason for that. I think she's going to share with us some of her choice and her, um, her ideas. Okay, so now let me give the room to Sabina. So everybody, if you you're there, just maybe just you can type hello in the chat box. Just say hello to our guest today. Okay, Sabina, the room is yours. Perfect. Thanks, Ming. Um, I think I need co-host privileges to share the presentation, or if you will share it. Yeah, you you go ahead. You can share it. Okay. I, if you can just make me co-host then, and I'll be able to share. Okay, uh, Scott, can you do that? Yes, there you go. Okay, perfect. Awesome, and I'll share my screen. Are you able to see it fine? Yeah, perfect. Okay, awesome. So hi everyone, I am Sabina and um, as you mentioned, I am currently a fourth year student at U of T studying at Rotman Commerce. So just to give you a little bit of background about myself. So four years ago, feels like forever ago. I can't believe how quickly time has, has flown, but I attended Holy Name and Mary College School, which is a school in Mississauga. Um, and during my time there, I was pretty involved, I guess, in my student life and my student community. Um, so I was a student ambassador. I was also our student government president. Um, and I also worked towards achieving my Duke of Ed Gold Award. And the reason why I mention these is because I think that being involved, first of all, not only really helped me doing my um, additional um, applications for a lot of the different commerce programs, um, but also just really taught me that I really enjoyed being involved in my student community. And it was definitely something that I was looking for when I was looking for a, uni a university to attend as well. So um, as Ming mentioned, I was applied to a bunch of different commerce programs and I was accepted to Rotman at U of T um, to Western Ivy's program. So there's like the advanced entry um, to get into Ivy in, in third year. And then also McMaster's Commerce Program, Ryerson uh, and Laurier, which is the BBA program. Um, and after receiving all of those acceptances, I did decide to choose uh, to attend Rotman uh, for a combination of reasons, which I can get into a bit later. 
Um, but I think one of the main reasons was also because I did receive um, a scholarship, which was the President Scholar of Excellence um, for kind of my academic achievements in high school. And I really appreciated that U of T and Rotman was willing to recognize those achievements and, you know, um, essentially re reward me with with something and recognize that. So um, I recognize that if a school was willing to do that, that was something that I really valued and also did help kind of making my decision. Um, and then during my time uh, at Rotman, uh, in the past four years, kind of my biggest achievement, I would say, and, and the thing that I'm most proud of is being a part of the Rotman Commerce Consulting Association. So at Rotman, we have a lot of different student groups. So they range from the Accounting Society, the Finance Association, um, Human Resources Association, honestly, they're, it, and they're always growing. We've added so many since I was even in first year, um, but it's in the Consulting Association where I kind of found my community in my first year and I stuck with it through all four years. So I've grown into different roles and different executive positions. And um, I wanted to mention this because it's kind of how I was able to tie in that passion for being involved in my student life in high school. And I was still able to find that at Rotman throughout my four years um, and continue to be involved that way. And uh, after I graduate, actually starting in September, I will be attending MasterCard Advisors as an associate consultant. And I did my summer internship with them last summer. So I'm really excited to be going um, back there again, um, starting in September. So that's a very, very quick overview of where I came from in grade 12 to how I got here now. But if anyone has any questions about that, well, you can definitely um, feel free to ask me later on, but hopefully that gives you a little picture of who I am. So kind of diving into Rotman Commerce specifically and a little bit more information that will hopefully be helpful to you all. So in terms of high school requirements, most commerce programs will ask for both your academic transcript and also a supplementary application. So every program will be different in what this supplementary application looks like. Um, but for Rotman specifically, it's a combination of both a written, app, a written portion and a video response. So um, I'm not too sure on the details of how, th I, I don't think things have changed too much in the past four years, but when I was applying, the written response was one written response that you had prepared ahead of time. So you knew what the question was, um, and it was like under 300 words, and you answered that. And then there was uh, when you would have to sit down and you were given about 20 minutes to answer a written question. And then I think a similar amount of time to answer some video responses and like three different video questions just about yourself, about your experiences. Why do you want to attend Rotman? Why do you want to attend U of T? Um, asking about leadership experience, a, a variety of questions and not every student will be asked the same question. Um, so that's also something to keep in mind is that don't be nervous or don't try and like wait for a friend to do the application because you may get different questions. Um, so it's kind of just it's good to be prepared for a be prepared for a variety and not necessarily expecting the same thing. Um, and in terms of academic transcript, Rotman is um, a pretty competitive program in terms of grades, but what they um, state on their website in terms of what they're looking for is mid to high 80s of an average um, for what they accept. And then I think that typically the average of our starting um, of our starting class, like of, of the starting first years is around the low 90s historically is what it's been. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind when you're applying. Uh, and then once you are in the program in first year, um, some of the courses, so I, I guess I'll mention here that the way that Rotman is structured is that you are admitted into Rotman in your first year, but you technically only um, start being a part of the faculty of Rotman in your second year. So how it works is that in first year, you're able to take some introduction Rotman courses. You have access to those, which not all students at U of T have access to, but you do as a Rotman student in first year. But then you do have minimum requirements that you have to meet within your first year in order to technically be accepted again, kind of in your second year into officially into the Rotman program. Um, so those requirements are 
for example, um, getting a minimum of a 63 in uh, both of your economics courses, a 67 in your intro to management courses, and a few other details like that. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind because I know for myself, I wasn't really aware of that coming into first year. And then I found out in first year, oh wait, you still have these requirements that you need to meet to actually continue to be admitted into second year. Um, the percentage of students that actually do continue on into second year is quite high. I don't know the exact statistic um, because you are also, if you, let's say, don't meet one of those requirements, you're able to still take it as a summer school course um, to then try and meet that requirement again to then get in in second year. So after kind of that process, the percentage is quite high, but definitely something to note because I know that for me, um, for example, when I was comparing between Western Ivy and Rotman, I was kind of hesitant with Ivy because I knew that it was conditional on your first two year grades um, in order to still be admitted into your third year. Uh, so definitely just something to keep in, in, in mind as, as you're considering programs. But when you are in first year, what is nice is that you do still have access to taking some Rotman courses. Um, and some of those courses, like I mentioned, that were mandatory. So that is both taking micro and macro economics, an intro to accounting course, intro to finance, intro to um, management, and intro to marketing. So you kind of get a little bit of a little taste of everything, um, which is nice because then also in your second year um, at Rotman, which is also slightly different from some of the other commerce programs at other universities is that you get to choose a specialist. So you a specialist is um, the way that they see it, I guess if you were to in, to, in terms of levels of required courses that you need, it's a little bit above a major, for example, taking at a university, that's what a specialist is. So um, you have the choice of specializing in management, accounting or finance and economics. Um, and I think largely at uh, Rotman, it's a pretty even split uh, amongst them. I think that accounting and finance and economics are some of our, our largest, the, the most amount of students enter those two streams. But it is nice because there's quite a wide variety and that kind of tailors the courses that you'll take between second to fourth year um, within those different specialists. So uh, what's nice about it is that in first year, you're able to take all of these different introduction courses, and then in your second year, you can decide which one kind of based on that small taste that you were able to get within first year. And uh, I should also note that uh, within your second to fourth year, you're also able to switch between specialists, of course, like depending that you get your required courses and that you meet the requirements, but it is still kind of flexible um, in, in those choices there. So next we'll go on to what to do in high school. If you are interested in pursuing business, this goes just beyond Rotman um, and just a business program in general. Um, so first I'll say to make sure that you do pursue your passion. So um, really take the time to reflect in high school and ensure that it, business doesn't have to be something that you're super passionate about. I'll say I'm not definitely passionate about business, um, but it's something to ensure that you know, you're trying to figure out what exactly it is that you're passionate about, that you're motivated to want to go and study, because at the end of the day, you're going to be in this program for the next four years. So make sure it's something that you're definitely interested in. Um, I'd also recommend to take some introductory business courses in high school if you're able. It's totally not mandatory. I know a bunch of people who started in commerce programs, never taking a business course in high school before, but it definitely does help, let's say, if you've taken an, uh, a grade 11 or 12 accounting course. Your first year accounting course is typically largely review of those courses. So not only does it kind of help you stay ahead of the game, it's not a lot of new content to learn in first year, but it's a good way to find out like if this if business is something that you want to study. Um, I'd also want to mention to make sure that you think beyond the classroom um, when you're looking at what university to choose when you're looking at different commerce programs because specifically in business and then when you're entering into the business industry, um, they're not just looking at like what degree that you have and what courses did you take, what grades did you get? They're looking at what else you were doing beyond just the classroom. Um, 
both in university and in high school. So in high school, when you're applying to university and then in university, when you're applying to jobs, they really are looking for a well-rounded individual that has a bunch of different experiences. So make sure that you're choosing a program that's gonna allow you to explore um, and, and have those opportunities outside of just the classroom. Um, and my next piece of advice is to make sure that you talk to lots of university students who are current university students. They are um, filled with lots of information who have they've been through the experiences that you are looking to actually go through. Um, so it's definitely valuable to reach out to whether that be like alumni of your high school or, you know, at Azul Academy, for example, we have education associates that you can come and talk to us. So um, it's a great way to just kind of find out more about what their personal experiences are and find insights that you wouldn't be able to find just through a Google search. Um, for example. And lastly, I mentioned um, also taking time for self-reflection. So to figure out like if business is, is right for you, figuring out what program exactly does it does your ideal program look like? Like where can you see yourself succeeding, thriving the most within your four years of university? And that does take a lot of time to just kind of sit with yourself and, and figure out um, what what would work best for you. So now once you've decided to apply, um, some tips for your actual application. Um, and these are not necessarily just tailored to Rotman's application, although I can I'll throw in a little bit of notes there, but also just for uh, commerce programs in general, is to make sure that you just be yourself first and foremost. They really are looking to see who you are as a person and admit you to the program. Um, and so know that you already are capable of, of entering the program when you're at the stage of, of submitting a supplementary application, just use this as an opportunity to show them that you are capable um, and to show them that you, you know what you know, you, you, are, you are this person who is confident that you want to apply to this program um, and kind of go in with that mindset. And it'll take a lot of pressure off of yourself I, I know it definitely really helped me with my video interview. I was kind of nervous, but I just went in thinking, all right, they, they're they not against me. They want to see if I would be able to fit into the program. And once I kind of changed my mindset, that really helped me approach it with a lot less stress. Um, another a piece of advice that was really helpful for me in high school was to keep an active list of all of my involvement and experiences. So as you go through um, all of high school, just kind of noting down like when you do different activities or if you do a volunteer experience for the weekend or whatever it may be to note things down because you never know when those small experiences might come up and be might be really valuable for your supplementary application. So having that list, just an ongoing like Word document or something was really helpful for me. Make sure that you definitely do your research. So if a question, for example, one of my video interview questions was, why do you want to attend U of T? And I was able to talk about how it's a really international program, speci specifically at Rotman Commerce. So um, I talked about why that was valuable to me, but I wouldn't have known that if I didn't do my research and find out ahead of time what really differentiates the program. Um, and they can tell if you've done your research or if you haven't, because if you're making blanket statements or if you're making specific statements to the school. So that was definitely, I think that's what definitely helped me in my video interview for Rotman. Um, and also start earlier, start early. The earlier that you get started on these applications, the less stressful it is because you can start to think about it. You can get it reviewed um, by other people. Um, you can make adjustments. So just try and start as, as early as possible. And also once you do get started, each application kind of gets easier and easier because you now, um, they're all kind of along the same line. So you can start to build off of them. Um, and it just becomes a lot easier once you've like had that practice. Um, with that being said, though, make sure that you're not just copy pasting from one application to another, because you really want to make sure that they answer the question. So this um, was kind of my best advice for going into the video interview, because you don't know what questions they can ask. It's a variety of questions um, that are typically along, like I mentioned, why U of T, why you're talking about your leadership skills, et cetera. Um, 
but having a prepared answer at that point sure is helpful, but at the end of the day, you really want to make sure that you answer the question specifically. Um, and so I know it sounds simple, but a lot of students can kind of get caught up in wanting to give the exact prepared answer that they had already thought of ahead of time. And then they don't even end up answering the question that that was actually asked. So keep that in mind. I know, of course, it's sometimes nerve wracking to answer questions on the spot that you haven't thought of beforehand, but really try and do your best to just answer the question directly because at the end of the day, that's what they're looking for is to see across all students, you know, were you able to, to answer that question? Um, and then a few tips for, I guess, learning in once you're in university. Uh, so I know this is probably thinking a bit far ahead for you all, but it's also really good advice for you to even start thinking about in high school as you think of your education. Um, so my best advice is to say to take ownership of your education and of your journey, especially in university. No one's going to hold your hand, tell you when deadlines are, tell you um, when you have to, where you should get involved, what you should do, how to reach out for help, all the sorts of things. So it's really important that if you even start in high school thinking of, you know, this is my education, it's a privilege for, for you to go and receive an education. How can you really take ownership of that? Um, it'll, it really changes your mindset from, oh, you have to go to school to, you want to go to school, you want to get this education, and what can I do to kind of enhance it? So that has, once I started taking that mindset, it really helped me in a lot of aspects. Um, use your resources. I cannot preach this enough. Upper years, profs, TAs, they're all there to help you, but they don't know that you need help unless you tell them that you need help. Um, and they are, I have such good relationships with a bunch of profs and TAs because I would just go to their office hours and quite genuinely say, I'm confused, I'm struggling, I need help. And they were able to, they understand what it's like to be a student. They understand that the content is difficult and they're there to help guide you through things, but you really just have to take that step yourself to, to ask for that. With that being said, like I mentioned, first year will be a challenge for everyone in different ways, some people academically, some people socially, um, everyone kind of goes through a, some, some people a combination of all of them. I know for, for me, that was the, that was the case. So it will be a challenge. Um, but I would say that don't let that dishearten you. And in fact, let that kind of encourage you that it is going to be a challenge. So it's okay if you find it challenging, because that's expected. Um, so but understand that kind of as the years go on, you start to get the hang of it. You start to figure out, find your groove in university. So don't get too disheartened if first year really is, is kind of throwing you a lot of curveballs because you will figure out how to manage those and get through it. So don't get too hard on yourself right in first year. I find that a lot of people do end up to do that, but um, try and try and power through. Um, and my last pieces of advice are to just attend class and stay on top of stay on top of content. And as simple as this sounds, this was like what every single upper year was telling me in my first week of university. And I was like, oh, okay, I got this. Like attend class and stay on top of things. It's just that seems simple. That seems just like common sense. But trust me, it kind of even those two simple things kind of start to become a little bit of a struggle. But if you really just try and stick to that at its core, like once you start missing one lecture here, one lecture there, it's very easy, easy to let it tumble. So as, as much as it sounds like simple advice, um, really, if you can try and stick to that, it'll really help you set yourself up for success. And lastly is to try new things because you really won't know what you love or hate if you don't try it. Another reason why I really loved Rotman in first year was that you kind of got exposed to all of those different intro classes, like I mentioned. So you're kind of forced in a way to try all of these different things and figure out what it is and what you like and what you don't like. Um, and even for me, like I ended up, as I mentioned, there's a different specialist. I switched specialists when I was in my third year in first semester. I switched out of finance and economics into management and doing a major in economics because I realized that finance wasn't for me, but I didn't realize that until I actually tried it, took some classes, got a little bit more exposure, and then realized that that wasn't the direction I wanted to take and kind of switch. So I think that trying new things is 
that's what university is for. There's no time in your life where you're really going to have that expansive opportunity to try whatever it is that you want. So really do try um, and take advantage of it as, most, as best as you can. So that's kind of all of the formal presentation that I have for you all. So I'd love to open the floor to questions and kind of address things um, more specifically to any of, of your concerns. Okay, thank you, uh, Sabina. That's uh, very comprehensive from the university life study and then also your high school thing, okay? I think while our audience are coming up with questions, I see a few of them already. Actually, I do have something to, to ask you. Um, I noticed that actually you are the, um, the winner of the, the, what, the President's Award Scholarship, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I know it's like only 50 students actually out of the whole, whole year, only 50 students can get that scholarship. Um, so basically, what are the qualifications? What's, what are the criteria to get that uh, scholarship? Can you share with us? Yeah, so that scholarship is one that is not application based. It's based on, um, so it's not like a separate application that you have to apply for, for example. Um, it's kind of just based on your academic um, uh, performance in high school uh, and based on that admission that that's how they decide on, on those 50 scholars. So that was kind of something that honestly I did not know about the scholarship when I was applying to U of T until I, uh, until I received it and I was very honored to have have received it but that's something that it, it's not a separate application so it's just considered uh, through your normal application with U of T. Okay so yeah I think when applying for university, actually many of us, many of our students don't know, actually you should apply scholarships and uh, mm -hmm. you, you may get something, right? So that's something, always there's some tricks there. So I think those kind of information will be very important for many of us. Okay, thank you about that. Okay, let's just go through the questions we have. We have a list of questions already. And if you do have questions, please just uh, type in the, uh, chat box. Okay, let's start with the first one. Uh, how many special specialist course you can choose? Specialist courses as in um, first year courses or? Yeah, okay, so that's a question from Camila. Yeah, if you can be a little bit more specific, the spe specialist course in terms of Okay, we'll get back to your questions later, okay? If you can just uh, provide some more information about that, okay. Okay, so yeah, I think you see, I mean, our audience will ask the question, why do you choose Rotman over Weston? <laughs> any, yeah, any struggles and what, what what's your thinking process? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. So that actually was kind of the two schools that I was, that it came down to in the end was choosing between those two schools. Um, and for, me, my logic at the time, I think was one, I was really hesitant about in Ivy, you for the first two years, you're not in Ivy. Um, so you kind of you are in the general um, business, like the BMOS degree, um, or whatever other undergrad degree that you that you apply to in your first two years. And then depending on, you know, you maintaining a certain average and maintaining involvement in your student community. So based on those two kind of contingencies is then you're able to actually be admitted in your third year. So even though you have the admission in, in grade 12, you still kind of still need to make sure that um, you work through that at, and maintain that to get in in third year. So that was something I was a bit hesitant about. I was really nervous that you know, I've, I've put in all this work in high school, I want to ensure that I'm going to come out with the university degree that I'm that I intend to come out with. So I was a little bit hesitant there. But I will preface, I, I will kind of add to that comment that I see now looking back that I wish that that was something that I didn't hesitate about because I notice now like after going through my four years at Rotman and also, you know, learning more about the different programs, learning more about Ivy as well. Um, of course, I can't say like whether I would have maintained that had I gone to Western, obviously every experience is different. But I think that it's something that I wish I, I wasn't as hesitant about because I do know that it definitely is achievable. Many people do 
are able to do it. And, um, you know, if you're able to kind of put your mind to things and, and, um, and able to kind of handle those, those pressures, the first and second year, like that's definitely something that you can achieve. So I would say that if that's you in that situation, don't hesitate too much about it. Um, and then for me, I also, I did really love the fact that U of T was downtown and had such close access to a lot of the other firms, companies, things that were, that were already downtown. Like you're in the financial district, essentially, or you're like 10 minute, 15 minute walk away. So I really enjoyed that, you know, kind of having that access to be able to have that exposure to the different firms. Um, so I think that those were like the two main factors that, that it ended up, that it ended up coming down to for me. And then also having the guarantee, like with the scholarship from U of T, I again, really appreciated that they were able to value me in that way. So that kind of drew me there. Okay, there's a follow up to that question. Are there any internship opportunity at U of T? Also so, yeah, so if you're asking about, for example, like co-op opportunities, that's not like U of T Rotman is not a, a co-op position. Um, and so internship opportunities come mainly through you seeking it out yourself and seeking out those opportunities. We do have an internal, um, I guess like job board, job posting board in which they filter through different internships that are available from other companies. Um, and they kind of just have that as notifications, but it's not anything that's, I guess, like a connection between Rotman and these companies. It's kind of like how they facilitate um, posting those internships. So it, at, at the end of the day, it is you kind of actively seeking that out. Um, and but a lot of students are able to leverage that resource that we have online on our portal to be able to find those different internships. Okay, yeah, so it's different from the co-op program, right? Yeah, but, exactly. I mean, I mean, people, I mean, here in, at least in GTA, maybe everybody knows about Rothman, everybody probably knows about U of T. So you will yeah. you just go out and ask and use those information properly. You will get a lot of chance, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, next question is from Camila. And also I think Camila just gets some additional information below. Yes, it's also for second year. I think it's about a specialist course, it's first and second year. What are the specialist course you can choose? That's her first question. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the, yeah, so the specialist courses are, um, so in first year you, you, those courses are technically um, optional, which are um, marketing, um, in, introduction to marketing, introduction to accounting, and introduction to finance or to finance. So those three you don't have to take in first year, but they recommend that you do because those are the three specialists, which are accounting, finance, and economics, and management that you choose in second year. Okay. Yep. Next question is also from Camila. For the average grade to, to apply U of T, is, is that just for grade 12? I think maybe your question is about what's the, okay, for the average grade to apply U of T, is that just for grade 12? I can maybe jump in there. Um, hello, yeah. everybody. I'm Helen Fleet, the Executive Director of Azul. So uh, if you're wondering, is it just the grade 12 or will they look at your grade 11 marks? So in the case of Sabina, um, she did receive an early offer with the President Scholarship and that is they were looking at her uh, grade 11 courses. So grade 11 courses are very important as well if you are looking to get an early acceptance. Of course, you're going to have to maintain that in grade 12, so you can't just sort of relax after that. But I would suggest, um, and I know Sabina did this, she was involved throughout all of her high school in different activities and showed leadership throughout. But remember that if you're applying early, which I always encourage everybody to do, uh, they are looking first at your grade 11 and because teachers can only submit your grade 12 courses later. Okay, thank you, Helen. Okay, the next question is an easy one for uh, Sabina. Surely you know, which campus is Rodman in? Yeah, Rodman is only at the downtown campus, so the one in Toronto. 
Okay. Next question is from Kathy. It's heard that only one third of the students in Rodman can get graduated from the Rodman programs. Is that true? I have not heard that stat myself, so I do not think so. I think the last when I was preparing for this presentation, um, Rodman actually has on their website that around over 90% or something are make it from first to second year. And then from second to fourth year, um, what they do say is that oftentimes if students aren't completing their degree, it's sometimes just because they're choosing to go pursue, they realize that commerce isn't for them and they choose to pursue a different major, but it's definitely not close to one third. Like I can guarantee you that I still have the same number of students in my classes in my fourth year. So it's, I'm not sure what the exact percentage is, but quite, quite high. Okay. Yeah. I know it's tough. I mean, it's in general, it's, um, it's tough in many of the North American universities, right? Did they get a lot of students in and then if you can go through the program, it's, it's, it's a small portion of that, but one third, that sounds really scary, but hopefully it's not true. <laughs> okay. No, no, not at all. Okay. Someone said that just to intimidate you from a point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, next question from Annie. Why did you switch from a specialist from finance to management? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. That was essentially just because I started taking, uh, in first and second year, even, um, sorry, in second year, even when you choose your specialist, a lot of the courses you take are pretty similar. So it was only in my first semester of third year where I actually started taking more in-depth finance courses. And I just realized that I didn't really enjoy doing finance. I didn't want to pursue a career in finance. Um, and that, so I was like, why? I was only in that specialist for the economics courses that I could take. So I went and talked to my academic advisor and I thought, okay, is there a way that I can just switch into management and take a major in economics instead so I can still get those economics courses without taking the finance courses, um, which is very rare. A lot of Rotman students, he said, usually switch out of it to get away from the economics and to get um, more finance. Um, but I think an, another testament to, again, taking ownership of your education and realizing that if this is what I wanted, I'm gonna kind of figure out a way to make it work for myself. So that's essentially why I switched. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I think I like what you actually mentioned in your slides as well. It's, it's about what you want, right? It's you. The program is you take the ownership of your program. So really know you, I mean, know yourself. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Next question from Jonathan. What's your high school average? Um, it's a great question. Trying to think back to grade 12, I could, I genuinely could not tell you. Uh, I know that I had above a 90 average when I was applying for, um, for my programs in grade 11 and grade 12. I'm sorry that I do not remember though exactly from grade 12. Yeah, I, I think overall for uh, U of T Rothman, I think it should be like 90 above, right? Some, some, somewhere around that or, uh, or, yeah, I think that yeah. should be somewhere around that, yeah. Okay, next question from Tim. Uh, how many AP, AP, DP, do you, you, You've taken, have you taken any AP courses? Is that, is that a question? Yeah, I did not take any AP courses in a high school. Okay. So it's definitely not a requirement to be able to. So AP, IB, no? No. Ah, okay. Okay, next one. Okay, from Camila again, let me see. Because you only have four years in university, if you change your specialist in the second year, you will only have two years left to study your new specialist. Would that affect anything? So that's dependent on uh, what you switch from. So for example, accounting has a lot of required courses. So it's harder to switch into accounting because you need to make sure that kind of all of your elective courses, you're filling with required courses. So it's really dependent. Like for me, it worked out that the finance courses I had taken were easily transferred to switch into the management specialist, but largely majority of the base courses that you're taking are transferable between specialists. So it's really kind of case to case. Um, 
but yeah, that, that's what I would say why it worked out for myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, that means a big decision to make if you want to change mm -hmm. your specialist. Yeah, of course, you have to make sure that all your past efforts is still counted, right? <laughs> so yeah, make a wise decision. Okay. Next one is from Annie. Okay, I think that's a very good question. What was the hardest transition for you from high school to university? That is a good question. <laughs> That's a tough question. Um, I think for me, it was just figuring out like how to be a university student. So in high school, I was very used to doing all of my reading, staying very on top of my work, like being, I think a lot of students who are kind of have, um, are able to achieve higher averages in high school, like have this mentality that you want to achieve like the continue to achieve those higher grades um and so for me was realizing that that may not be possible in university very likely wouldn't be um and figuring out that you know i'm not necessarily going to be have the time to do all of my readings or to be able to do every single homework question and check every answer so it's figuring out like what was mandatory for not mandatory but like what was necessary for me to do where I could kind of have some wiggle room um, and being really kind to myself, realizing that, you know, you are not defined by your grades whatsoever. And like allowing myself to realize that that transition to university um, is going to see a jump. Everyone's going to see a difference in their grades and, and helping myself to kind of accept that. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. I think I've heard many times in our past events so yeah, everybody's talking about going to university. Let's say you are the top three students in your high school, but hey, all those top three students could probably go to like all these universities, right? Like Rothman or all those big ones, famous ones. And then you are, your competition is just getting even more fierce. So you can mm -hmm. probably not stay in, within the top three in your school, forget it, maybe for, in your class even. So it's hard. So we need, really need to ad, ad, adapt. I think what I like you, what you said, uh, understand that you are not defined by your grades. So you have to look at what works for you and, this, and yourself, look into yourself, reflect what you really need, how, to, how you want to juggle between the time and reading. I mean, there's a, always a lot of things to read, a lot of things to learn, but you have to balance your life. I mean, right. It's not exactly. just about grades. Yeah, grades is very important, of course. We everybody want to have good grades, but you have to keep mentally, physically, everything aligned to that. Okay, thank you. Exactly. Yep. Okay, next one. Okay, I think next one is is it very challenging? We kind of answer that question. Is it very challenging to get higher GPA in Rotman? <laughs> yeah, I, so I would say that it's it's definitely it's challenging. It's a challenging program, but it's not impossible. Um, I think it's just about figuring out how you work best, using what resources work best for you. Some people going to office hours was really helpful, and for some it wasn't. For some, doing the readings is helpful. For some, it's not. So it's kind of just figuring out what works. And once you're able to figure that out, then how you can succeed. And for some people, they figure it out early on and some, it takes a while. So I wouldn't say that it's it's impossible. Um, and it's definitely doable is what I'll say. Yeah, it's challenging, but it, if mm -hmm, you're determined, mm -hmm. it's still possible, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, so next question is from Ellen. I think maybe Helen can help with this question as well. So it's GPA very important while looking for internships or even the first time job hunting. Is the GPA very important or maybe is, is it the most important thing? So what's your take on that? I'll, I'll certainly take that question. It's a really good one, but Sabina, you can jump in at any point. Um, so, well, actually Sabina, you could first respond. Did they look at your GPA when you were applying to your internships or in this case, your full-time job that you're going to be moving into? Yeah, so I, uh, I I will kind of preface, so the GPA was something that was considered for the, the industry that I applied to, um, but that is very specific to the industry that I have applied to, and it's, it's certainly that something is shifting a lot as well. Um, 
so for my first two internships was not something that was considered, but as I have kind of shifted a more targeted industry was, but that's just because of the industry that I ended up choosing. But I think Helen, you can provide more insight on a broader answer of that. Well, I like what you said, Sabina, because it, it certainly does depend. If you're looking mm -hmm. into accounting, many of the accounting firms will require or will look at your GPA. Um, some of the other industries are moving away from that. Of course, the mm -hmm. emphasis would be on your interview, your personal interview. Um, Hello. One medium dark rose double cream. That's it. Thank you. All right. I'll just continue. Um, I and mean, so it, although it's always great to hire GPA, uh, what I've seen in terms of the job market and just as Sabina said, in her first internship and second, it isn't something they look at. It's almost as employers know that if you're at a school like Rotman uh, at U of T, you are at a very uh, top tier school and that you have committed and worked diligently through a demanding uh, position. Um, what I have seen in terms of the management or economics Although they'll look to it, what's happening more and more is their final decisions aren't made in that. Um, and again, I think the only industry is in economics, sorry, pardon me, in accounting, uh, that the, the big four accounting firms still look at that. Um, but if you're worried about it, it's just one piece. Yeah. I think yeah. Uh, also the previous, um, uh, our guest speakers also mentioned, I think definitely it's important, but it's not the only important thing. Exactly. Right? Yeah, it, it, I mean, I, I used to interview people as well. So I will look at the scores or look at their resume, but what's really most important thing is how they present themselves, especially mm -hmm. during the interview, how they really answer questions. I mean, some of the questions are challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, I, actually, I don't really look at answer, but I really look at how you are reflecting how you respond to that question. That's the most important thing rather than an announcer. Yeah. Although GPA will be looked at just mm -hmm. as saying, they're really actually just seeing it as one factor. So mm -hmm. remember to stay involved. It's very much how you interact in the interview, where you showed initiative, your stories. So mm -hmm. think of university as you're building stories for each of your position that you're going to be applying to. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, your story, I like that. It's about how you present yourself, your narrative about yourself, right? Your, your experience. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Um, next one from Angela. Is there an international exchange opportunity during the third year? How would yeah, that affect so... the credit maker <laughs> minor process in Rockman? Yeah, so I was actually on my exchange in Italy la at this time last year. So halfway through, I unfortunately had to come home because of COVID. But I mean, everyone's lives were turned upside down because of COVID. But I was kind of fleeing from Milan, where the center of the outbreak was at the time. So it was very stressful. But um, yes, Rotman is actually, it, it does have the opportunity. And um, uh, I know that some other programs kind of more broadly, I guess, showcase it or as an as a feature of their program, but a lot more Rotman students are starting to take advantage of this opportunity, which is great because I think it's showing the program that it's becoming in more demand of students. So totally able to um, and still fulfill all your requirements of taking a uh, one semester. And it's not net, like you can kind of take it at any semester, just obviously talking to your academic advisor to figure out like what semester works best for you. Okay, next question. Is it better you, you just stay in one specialist? Um, I mean, most people, they're able to choose one specialist and, and continue with that. I have a history of being very indecisive anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> it kind of like turned out that I ended up switching, but I will say most people do end up sticking to one specialist. It's just that there is the opportunity to be flexible if needed, but at the end of the day, yes, I feel like I would be the anomaly, not the, the normal case in the program. <laughs> Okay, so here's another question from Kathy about GPA. 
Okay. So is in your class, normally what average GPA can students get if you happen to know others? Yeah, so I think the average in most of my Rotman and courses in my undergrad, I was looking through our transcript the other day was around like a B to B plus, which is around like mid 70s around there. So that's typically the average of most courses that, that I've taken in, in Rotman, yeah. Okay, next one from Annie. Have you had a lot of co-op, well, basically interns doing your fourth year at Rotman? Are you planning to, are you planning taking on Rotman MBA? Yeah, I do. Are you looking at it? Yeah, so um, in terms of internships, I was um, lucky enough to be able to have a, prof uh, a professional experience every year, every summer. Um, but that's not necessarily like required by any means. I mean, people get experiences through volunteer experience or there's lots of different ways to get really great experience that's valuable for future employers. Um, but I was able to do that in all of my summers. Um, and in terms of an MBA, definitely not something I'm looking at right now. Um, I mean, I think right now I'm happy to have graduated with my commerce degree and I kind of want to get some actual work experience before I decide on like going to pursue a master's of any kind. <laughs> okay. Okay, next one, question from Annie as well. On a scale of one to 10, how stressful you would rate the level of stressfulness during your time at Rockman? From a scale oh, of one to 10, how stressful that can be? That's an interesting question. <laughs> Um, so I would say, and this may be like a cop-out answer, but I would say that there, it, it all depends on the way that you are able to handle yourself through the program. So there are times in the program where I'm sure I felt like I was at a 10, but there were times where I was able to take that 10 and bring it to like a one, for example, just by the ways in which you learn to be able to manage that stress. And I think that's one of the most important things in university is finding people to support you, making sure you still make time for the things that you love. For example, being involved in my student association was being around people that, you know, we're all going through the same thing. We're able to support me. You know, we were able to study together. I was able to be around people that I enjoyed. So finding ways to bring down your stress level so you're not constantly at a 10. Sure, you may have like a day or two where you go through that. Um, but finding those ways to make it less stressful and it, it's totally manageable to bring those down down to one. <laughs> okay. I think so, yeah. Thing, Go okay. ahead, Helen. I think the only yeah. thing I would add to Sabina because that was a great response is that to remember that although they say university is so different from high school, there's a lot of support there. So mm -hmm. if you are finding yourself in a stressful situation, you know, attend for a few days, know that there are academic advisors, that there are other groups that are there exactly to support you through that. Mm -hmm. um, and although Sabina, like when it was in person, of course, with her groups and with her associations and clubs, there's that opportunity to, to get together. But through COVID, they've still maintained the consulting association, the different organizations within Rotman, it's just virtual for now. Um, and it, it's only temporary. So I'm certain that if you're worried, you know, the stress level, will it always be a 10? If you feel that way, please reach out, just as mm -hmm. Sabina said. Um, whether it be someone you trust or someone at the university or even your prof and then your prof would be able to refer you to the appropriate person to support you. The key is not, and Sabina mentioned this earlier, is reach out, is talk to someone and mm -hmm. they're there to support you. The, whether it be the career center, student services, your academic division, reach out. Yeah. Yes, great point. Yeah, I think um, I can speak more from, um, I mean, a Chinese students. I mean, I was a Chinese student before. So, I mean, in general, Chinese are more, slightly more, I mean, the stereotype, of course. I think for you guys, probably you, you're born here, you, you, start, you start your elementary school here, you're probably different. But in general, Chinese may be a little bit more reserved, a little bit shy. So, but 
remember, I mean, this is in a very competitive environment. If you don't ask for help, you will sink. So really, yeah, like what uh, Sabina and Helen mentioned, ask for help, reach out to your professor, reach out to uh, the TAs and anyone you can get a hold of, anyone you trust, yeah, ask for help. And I'm sure they will help you, right? And yeah, don't I, be shy to ask. Yeah, asking for help is not a weakness. It's actually a strength because it means that you've identified that maybe there's an area that you need a little help. It's not a weakness. It's not mm -hmm. perceived as, oh no, they can't do that. Uh, so why not give yourself that advantage? If you are finding something that's difficult for you, again, you know, reach out. And there's so many different ways that you'll see right when you get accepted, there's clubs weeks, there's lots of opportunities. Uh, there may be uh, Chinese business associations that you feel more comfortable with. So there's, there's lots of resources to support you through your academic studies. Mm -hmm. Yep, there are a lot of resources there to make sure that you will be successful. Mm -hmm. They are there for a purpose, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to the next one from Kathy. How is the, your school career service to students? Are they really helpful for students to find jobs or internship opportunities? Yeah, so um, I have not really used our career services as, as much, so I can't speak too, too much to to Rotman services, um, but it definitely like they they are present on campus. They offer a lot of resources for you know resume review, interview prep, um, connecting you to you know doing mock interviews, um, connecting you to firm industry reps, things like that. Um, I will say, especially in Rotman, I think I found most of my like career support through the different student associations, which have such a big presence. They're able to bring the firms to campuses for different events. They're the upper years and the executive in those associations are able to, you know, help review your resumes and help you run through tips. So that was kind of like the, the area that I leveraged a little bit more, but we definitely do have a career, like a more formal career services that helps us with that as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would just echo what Sabina said. Um, the career services are there to support you do that transition from school to work. And depending on what you need, um, mm -hmm. absolutely. It's well staffed and they're there for your student success so that you will feel that, you know, the entire process, not just learning, but that transition is best possible for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the last question on the list from Sophia. Okay, do you have any tips for time management and balance your workload in university? I think this is one of the most common questions that I get. And I always say that it's a matter of really honestly figuring out what works for you. So trial and error, because for example, what works best for me is like, time blocking my day. So I love scheduling in everything. I schedule in like when I'm going to have dinner, when I'm going to have go for a walk. Like I just love being organized. And for some people that doesn't work. They need a flexibility and they just like having a to-do list that they get through the day. Um, and it took me a while to figure out what system works for me. So my best advice to you is to talk to a bunch of different people and get their advice. So my advice is time blocking, having those like sections through the day um, and get a bunch of different advice, test them out. And then as you figure out what works well, what doesn't, you just start to incorporate more of that and, and kind of grow from that. And like I said, that's exactly what university is, is learning. In first year, you're just really learning how to be a student, how to figure out what works for you. Um, so as much as that wasn't an exact answer, I think that it's the best answer because if you just try and copy what someone else, what works for someone else, it honestly very well may not work for you and may be worse. So the best advice is to just kind of use it as a learning experience to figure out what, what's, what's right for you specifically. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I think that also go back to your presentation is all about you. It's your time, the, the way you, I mean, your learning habits, your, your, your preferred 
I mean, balance your preferred workload, right? You need to find something that works for you. But of course, it's not just say, oh, okay, I can just relax. <laughs> but the thing is, how I'm going to get into the workforce? What are the things I'm going to do in the future? I might go for an MBA or any other master degree studies. Mm -hmm. So what is your goal? And then use that goal as your direction and then balance your, your life, your work. Yeah. Yeah, I exactly. think exactly. Yeah. And, and at the end, I mean, university is something that we have to enjoy as well. It's not just about study. It's about building your relationships with the society and get to know people, networking. That's also a very important part of the university, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I said, okay, that's all the questions on the list. So uh, I want to do you have any other questions? You can still have, yeah. We can answer for a, a last one or two if you still have any. Okay, let me just see. Okay. Okay, so yeah, if there's no questions, um, I would like to say thank you to Sabina for taking your time to prepare this talk with us. And also I would like to say thank you to Helen, uh, the founder of Azure Education Services to support us in, in this collaboration. And so I put our website on the screen. So if you are you want to know more information about the program that help you, so you can either go to upstreamacademy.com. You will find reading, writing courses that help you to become more successful learners. And also, if you are looking for university application, university uh, preparation, and also even if you late lately, if you're maybe three years later, okay, you, if you need career development goals, helps, and then that's Azure Education Services that Helen will be so glad to help you with that. Okay, so yeah, I see this is another question. Okay, thank you from Cassie. Thank you so much. Okay, so that's the end of our webinar. I, uh, actually, we have a series of webinar coming up in the next few weeks mm -hmm. uh, with Helen. And I hope uh, we'll see you again next week. Yep. I just want to say thank you, Ming, for inviting us. And thank you, Sabina, for doing an outstanding job of uh, being able to answer all these questions and sharing your story. And for any of you who are watching, whether you be a, um, you know, an upcoming student applying to university or a parent, uh, one of the best things you can do is ask questions just like you did this evening in this session. Um, there are resources out there, whether it be for me, from the university. Um, asking questions is one of the best things you can do because that's the only way you'll learn. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thank you, everyone. So if you miss certain part of this uh, webinar, you can always go to our website. I will post it uh, by Monday, the latest. So check it out. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thank you, Helen. Thank, Thank you. you, Sabina. Bye. 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 Thank you.